In this video, I will explain how to calculate market equilibrium quantity and price before and after a tax has been imposed. So let's consider the following situation. Let's say that we have some good with the following supply and demand equations. The quantity supplied of this good is equal to negative 20 plus 3 times P, where P is the market price for this good. And the quantity demanded is equal to 100 minus 2 times P, again where P is the market price. Now let's consider the scenario where the government decides to impose a $10 per unit tax on the supplier. Let's find the market equilibrium quantity and price before and after this tax has been imposed. So let's first find the market equilibrium quantity and price before the tax. So to do that, all we have to do is set the market supply equation equal to the market demand equation, and we'll solve for P. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll say negative 20 plus 3P is equal to 100 minus 2P. If we add this 2P to the left-hand side, and let's add a 20 to the right-hand side, we get 5P is equal to 100 plus 20, that's 120. And to solve for P, all we have to do is divide both sides by 5. So the 5s on this side will cancel out. We'll be left with P is equal to 120 divided by 5. That turns out to be 24. So the market equilibrium price before the tax is $24. Now, to find the market equilibrium quantity, we take this 24 and we can plug it into either one of these equations. It doesn't matter which one you choose. So let's choose the market demand equation. That looks a little bit easier. So we'll say Q is equal to, we'll have 100 minus 2 times, for P we're plugging in a 24. So we get 100 minus 2 times 24 is 48, and 100 minus 48 is 52. So we'll say 52, let's call it units of this good. So the market equilibrium quantity is 52 units. So we found the market equilibrium price and quantity before the tax is imposed. Now let's find the market equilibrium price and quantity after the tax. So I'll clear a little bit of space here. Okay, so I've summarized our results so far. Before the tax, the equilibrium price, which I've labeled as P star, was $24. And the equilibrium quantity, which I've labeled Q star, was equal to 52 units. Now let's consider the scenario where a $10 per unit tax is imposed on the supplier. So when we have this $10 tax on the supplier, it's going to directly affect the supply equation. And here's how it will affect this equation. We can say quantity supplied, let's say quantity supplied plus tax. This is our new quantity supplied plus tax is equal to negative 20 plus instead of three times P, we're going to have P minus the tax. So we'll have three times P minus the tax. So the amount of the tax. So all we've done is we've replaced this P with P minus the tax. And it's important to keep this 3 outside of the parentheses. So we're keeping this coefficient, this 3, and we're just replacing the P with P minus the tax amount. So the tax amount is $10. So we can write this as negative 20 plus 3 times P minus 10. So this is our new quantity supplied equation after the tax. So we can simplify it a little bit by distributing this 3 into the parentheses. So we'll get negative 20 plus 3p minus 30. And if we simplify a little bit more, let's combine negative 20 and negative 30, that's negative 50. So really this is negative 50 plus 3p. So this is our new supply equation after the tax has been imposed. So now to find the new market equilibrium quantity and supply, we're just going to set this supply equation equal to the original demand equation. So the demand equation does not change at all. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll say negative 50 plus 3P is equal to 100 minus 2P. So let's solve for P. So if we add a 2P to this side and add a 50 to this side, we end up with 5P is equal to 150. And to solve for P, we can divide both sides by 5. So these 5s will cancel out. We'll be left with P is equal to 150 divided by 5. That's 30. So the new market equilibrium price is $30. So we can see that the market equilibrium price has increased from 24 to 30. Now let's go ahead and label that as P star, and we'll say tax. This is the market equilibrium price after the tax. Now to find the new Q star, let's say Q star sub tax, the new market equilibrium quantity after the tax, we're just going to take this 30 right here, and we can plug it into either the new 
supply equation, or we could plug it into the original demand equation. So let's just plug it into the original demand equation. So that will be 100 minus 2 times 30. So 2 times 30 is 60, so we get 100 minus 60, which is 40. And we'll say units. So our new market equilibrium quantity is 40 units. So we can see that the number of units decreased from the original market equilibrium quantity. So let's go ahead and summarize our results. All right, so to summarize our results, before the tax, we found that this was our market equilibrium price and quantity. And after the tax, we found these new values for our market equilibrium price and quantity. Let's go ahead and visualize these results just to really wrap our head around it. So here's our original quantity supplied equation. Let's go ahead and graph that on this graph right here where P, the price, is shown on the y-axis and Q, the quantity, is shown on the x-axis. So to graph this equation right here, the easiest way to do so is just plug in a zero for quantity supplied and solve for P. Because on our graph, when quantity is at zero, that's the point right here, we'll be able to solve for P. So we'll see where does the supply curve intersect this axis. So if we plug in a zero right here for quantity supplied, let's see what we get. Zero is equal to negative 20 plus 3P. So if we add a 20 to the left-hand side, we get 20 is equal to 3P. To solve for P, we'll just divide both sides by 3, and these 3s will cancel out. We'll find that P is equal to 20 divided by 3 is about 6.67. So the supply curve, let's say right here, it crosses the P, this axis, at 6.67. It will slope upwards, something like this. So this is our original supply curve. Now we can also graph our demand curve right here in the exact same manner. So let's plug in a zero for quantity and see what we get for P. So if we plug in a zero, we get zero is equal to 100 minus 2P. If we add a 2P to the left-hand side, we get 2P is equal to 100. And dividing both sides by two, we can find that P is equal to 50. So the demand curve is going to cross this axis, let's say this is 50 up here, and then it will slope downwards, something like this. This is our demand curve. So what we found is that the original market quantity equilibrium and price is the point where these demand and supply curves intersect, this point right here, which we found was a quantity of 52. So let's say this is 52 right here. And the price, the equilibrium price, was 24. So let's write 24. Now, after the $10 tax was imposed, we found that this was our new quantity supplied equation. So let's graph this equation as well. So again, we're going to plug in a zero for Q on this left-hand side and solve for P. So if we plug in a zero, we get zero is equal to negative 50 plus 3P. If we add a 50 to the left-hand side, we get 50 is equal to 3P. And solving for P, we can divide both sides by three. We get P is equal to 50 divided by three is about 16.67. So this new supply curve crosses the, this axis, this P axis, at 16.67. And it will have a slope that perfectly matches the slope of the previous supply curve. So let's label this S plus tax. So here's what we'll notice. This new supply curve is shifted upwards by the exact amount of the tax. So remember, the tax was $10 per unit. So we can see that this entire supply curve has shifted up 10 units. So every point on the original supply curve is shifted up by 10 units. And what we found was after this tax, the new equilibrium quantity, so this point right here where the original demand curve intersects the new supply curve, we found that that quantity is 40. So let's label that 40. And we found that the new equilibrium price was 30. So this point right here was 30. So we can see that after the tax was imposed, it shifted up the supply curve, which caused the market equilibrium price to increase. So we went from $24 to $30. And as a result, the market equilibrium quantity decreased from 52 units to 40 units. And that makes sense because at a higher price point, fewer consumers are interested in buying that good. So that is how you can calculate the market equilibrium quantity and price before and after a tax has been imposed.